Hello everyone, I'm Mikasar and welcome back to Son of Drop, Fall into Poison. Yes, I know it has been a, a long, long time since I've played this game. But I wanted to get the uh, the ending where we save that guy, Kiyoshi. Yeah. I know I, in the first time I played this game I saved Himino. I was really happy about it. And then I was confused and then I got the bad ending. And then I had to look up a stupid guy to see how I get a different ending and it said you have to start a new game which I did and you guys all saw that already so yeah apparently I can save Kiyoshi in this route so yeah I'll, I'll see you in a bit cause it's the last skipping I gotta do so be right back Okay, this is the, I think, I believe this is the part where we have to help him snap out of it, if I'm not mistaken, so, let me see, skip, oh, god, I forgot how creepy this was, um, um, call out, call out frantically, was it? Oh, his name is, his, his name is Hiyoshi, not Kiyoshi. My bad. My bad. Hiyoshi-san, what's wrong? Please come back. Even after what he's done to me, I still resist using violence against Hiyoshi-san. Of course, I take into account that my strength would be no match for his. More than anything, he has saved me at the jellyfish booth. The one who saved my life. My only thought is that I have to save him. Gah. Yeah, he's going crazy. I forgot about that. Hiyoshi-san, calm down. It's alright. It's alright. You all. You all. Oh god. Ignoring my attempt- There, there goes my phone. <laughs> Ignoring my attempt to calm him. His large arm tense is shooting out towards my leg. This is bad. At this rate... Call off his name. Cause... I know... I played some of this off screen, but from one of my previous save file before I beat the game the first time, and yeah, when I first clicked even so call his name, both of his names were really wrong. You, you see what I mean? Hiyoshi-san. Even so, I want to save him. This is something that comes from some sense of duty or ethics. Just for myself, I want to save him. You all, after all, you won't even... As he scales my body, I somehow keep him from grabbing both my legs. Thanks to the fact that he is distracted, I am somehow able to get through the moment without being grabbed. You won't even, Hiyoshi-san, what exactly do you... You all won't look at me. His <laughs> words get caught up in my chest. You won't look at me. This thought seems to be et et etched into his deranged mind. If I remember correctly, the previous answers that were given to me was, yeah, it was Kiyoshi, and it's not, it, I know it wasn't Kenji, Keiji, Ke, Keiji, or Shinji, it was one of those two, but yeah, I'm like, but wait, no, no, this is his real name, so I'm like, well, Maybe he won't mind if I mispronounce his name. No, he got, he killed me. He killed me. That's not true, because if I weren't looking at you, I wouldn't be thinking that I want to help you now, would I? You will, Hiyoshi, Hiyoshi. I call his name. See, look, there you go. Shinji and Ken, it was Shinji and Kanji. That was his that was it too. I'm like, wait, that's not it. It's Kanji. I know it's Kanji. Why is it giving me Kanji? Kanji-san. Having been called by his name, the hand reaching towards me slowly lowers. Though he, though the hand clutching my leg does not loosen, it is correct to say that he has stopped. Kanji-san, it's all right now. I'm looking right at you. Uh. Um. For some time. This rain period continues to per, 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 right. What? I cannot pronounce my entire being. 
Unable to relieve the tension, I stare at the uh, suspended Hiyoshi san. Is that voice? Is that so, big sis? Um. Suddenly the voice passes through my brain, piercing the silence. Then it just suddenly cuts off. What? That you? My own child? Oh, he's back tomorrow about time. You nearly killed me. Kenji-san, just now, for a second. Mari's voice. I started to say, then shut my mouth. I get the feeling that her voice has reverberated down this passageway, but Mari is nowhere in sight. If it's just an auditory hallucination, like the one from when we came in. All right. A refreshed expression appears on Hiyoshi-san's face, as if a demon has been expelled from his body. Why, chan I... What on earth? You don't remember anything? Don't remember? Remember what? Well, you start to crawl all over me, and then you nearly killed me. Now then, you, you just acted funny for a bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, with murderous intention. Don't carry the truth, Mayu. Relieved that his voice has returned to Nero, I tell him what happened over the last several minutes. Oh, of course, at least she tells him. Of course, I take the edge off some of the frightening things to kill. Don't sugarcoat it, Mayu chan. Tell him the truth. He nearly killed you. It isn't that I don't still feel worried about him, but at any rate, what had happened was the normal. I come to an agreement with myself that the version of him I had said is a separate person. What are you saying? Anyway, sorry, wouldn't be enough. Mayu-chan, I've heard you, haven't I? Well, yeah, to be honest. I'm sorry. I really am so sorry. All I can do now is apologize. No, that's not... Hmm? Could you let go of my leg? <laughs> I completely forgot. So did I, to be honest. I, so I was. So basically, he was on top of me still. I see. Arching his eyebrows upward, Hiyoshi san releases my leg. He probably stayed unaware of it because ooh, of concentrating on what I was telling him he had done. I had thought. I had thought him a lighthearted person, but he is definitely earnestly taking in what he had done. Watch him as he bites down on his bottom lip so hard he bleeds, I decide to believe in his honest nature. I take a breath and rise to my chest. To my feet. I must say rise to my chest. <laughs> Calling out to him as he remains in his, with his head down. Are you alright now? My body still feels stiff. Do you think you can stand? Somehow, yeah. Ugh. He fell. Resting his hands on his knees, he, he pulls his large body up. Oh. Huh, again? Ah? What? Oh, a ghost voice echoes in my mind. A voice that whispers to me here in the aquarium. My little sister's voice, Mari! Almost the time I, with my frustration, hear the Yoshi san grimaces once again. Crap, my head. Yoshi san? I have no time to worry about Mari. Having stood up almost halfway, Yoshi san crumbles as if his strings have been cut tumbling to the floor on the, of the passageway. I rush over to him, grabbing him by the shoulder in instinctively. Don't worry. Huh? It's not unthinkable that I might revert to the way I was earlier, right? If I do, leave me. Go on. But, but, you don't need to worry. I'll be fine. Crawling across the floor, he was just on rest himself against the wall, gripping his head with one large hand. He turns to me with a pained expression. He is sweating profusely and struggling for air, taking deep breaths. Despite the state he is in, the corner of his mouth twitched up with a ha ha. Aren't you going to look for your friend? I'll follow you later, Khan. So just go. But, but, go! Oh god, it's scary. His bellow drowns out even my own breathing. Rip. Again, wor why big words? Reverberating? Rever rever Reverberating? Down the, <laughs> down the passageway. For some time after he closes his mouth, the air seems to quiver. However, I do not find him or his sudden outburst frightening. Yoshi-san. It hurts that I've caused you pain, Mayu-chan. 
You don't need to worry. If I rest a bit, I'll be fine. So, I understand. Are you sure? On my own, it's been nothing but frightening experiences. As he closes his eyes, he gives me a thumbs up. His haggard breathing continues as he deals with his own impending madness. He's trying to tough it out so that he doesn't hurt me again, creating puddles of sweat on the floor. He's seriously worried about me. Therefore, I also need to seriously trust in him no matter how many times I want to look back. I fight off the impulse and at a quick pace I am not used to, I put the passage behind me. Okay. As soon as the door is between us, I put my ear against it and listen to Sansa's passageway I just left. Her red is only my own violent pulse and not Hiyoshi San's breathing that I can hear. It was in a strange state my mother had once had a high fever, but Hiyoshi San seemed like he was suffering even more than that. In spite of the circumstances, he had pushed me to go. Since I was worried about him, you know, he was giving my situation priority. I'll come back no matter what. I muttered to no one in particular. That's right, this is... Okay, so... Now we're at the part with um, Himiro's here. So, I'll call back when we get a, a new, um... Word, a, a new scene! There you go, that's what I was looking for. So I'll be right back, stay tuned. Alrighty, so I skipped everything that I was in between. Now, I know at this part... I was trying my best to save Sayo. What is that? What's her name? I forgot her name already. Oh my god, Sayo. Yeah, I know. Last time I chose, I chose observe the situation. So now I'm going to stop her. And I, of course, I clicked. Back. I don't care about the backlog. I'm going to stop her this time, and hopefully that actually saves Sayo. I attempt to leave my safe place, but I cannot find a break in the wall. There should be a door somewhere. Even as I think this, I cannot find a doorknob in the darkness. As I keep my eyes on both of them, I decide to search the area connected to the fish of the world booth. The recorder continues the girl using hand gestures to get Sai Saginua's attention. In contrast, she merely looks down at the girl. From my perspective as an outsider, it doesn't look like she's even paying her attention. What could have happened? What in the world would have could have happened to bring them to such a climax? Though I have many questions, it is unlikely I'll get any answers. A sad expression appears on the girl's face for a moment, and she looks away from Saginuma. At almost at the same time, the composure of Saginuma's son's face, she creases her brow and opens her eye her eyes wide, her nose twitching. Something has touched a nerve, getting her attention, even without sun, that much is clear to me. Huh? Wait. Without thinking about it, I pound the wall. However, this doesn't cause much as a ripple, leaving me cut off from the two of them. This time, second my hits the girl, and then she... Okay, I, I, I get it, so I I can't save Sayo-chan. There is no sign of the impact. <laughs> Sayo-chan! I was trying so badly to save her. At least she... At least Sayo knew what dies in the end. And at least Silas was her dad. That's something, right? Javi hands the back of her head on the tank. The girl falters and Sayinua flips her body over. Grabbing the back of her collar, the girl's face is turned in my direction. And I realize that she has fainted. Oh, she's unconscious. Not now for long. Trust me, she's gonna be way more conscious. A horrible premonition runs through me. As the girl's chest pressed against the wall of the tank, Sayinua grabs the back of her neck head and smashes it against the tank all over and over again. Mm. No, I don't want to see this. I, 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 look, I already lost Sayo Chan once. I don't want to lose her again. She'll die. She's already going to die. I can tell you that much, Mayu Chan. I was all thinking I screamed. It's not going to, it's not going to help. No one can hear you. I have to help her. I can't stay quiet any longer. At any rate, I pound the wall before me. It's not gonna work, Mayu chan. Come on. Come on, please. Let it get through. However, no matter how many times I strike, Saginuma does not look this way, as if the sound isn't going through. It's a thick glass, Mayu chan. Since the sound of the Ah, uh, since the sound from the other side isn't coming through, then the sound from my side shouldn't go through either. 
either, either, whatever you pronounce it. I figures I have no choice but to get out of there. As I go out there, my bad. I grope around, about, <laughs> trying to find a crack in either side of the wall. From the top to the bottom, right to left, I go along the outer side of the wall of the tank and look to see if there's a way to get in from below. A handle of some sort would be great, or anything that could serve as a starting point. There's nothing. Nothing. I still can't find any way whatsoever to get to the other side. Panicking over what I should do, I frantically search for the door. Kanji! Above you, Mai Shan. Huh? That voice! I thought he was resting in the hallway. What the heck? What breaks through my bewilderment is something reminiscent of a man's voice. Looking up, I breathe a sigh of relief as the, at the words. Pressing through as I am lifted up in sync with the voice bellowing, let's go. The sensation is different from floating, more like my body is being pushed up. I hear the voice from below say, oof, just as I'm about to hit the ceiling. I place my hands against it. There should be a handle above you. If you pull that, a ladder will come out. <sighs> right. I look down to give my reply and finally confirm the voice's owner. He got a firm grip on the left, right, left and right side of my hips, raising me several meters in the air. It gives me the stable feeling of a father sitting on a child's of a father sitting a child on his shoulders, not letting me slip. Kenji-san. It's fine, just open the door. Alright. From there you can pass through the passageway above and go to the other side of the tank. I got it. If you don't hurry, that girl would die. Right. I slide my hands across the ceiling searching for any bumps or grooves. I find something sooner than I expected and give a good pull on that bump. As I clatter the ladder on the other side of the door, it swings down and I reach for it before it drops all the way. I've got this! Alright, I'll be there in a bit. Inside the ceiling there's a passageway I have to crouch down to walk through. To the left and the right of me are machines with meters attached. Surely they regulate the booth below. After 10 meters, I have come far enough to pass the barrier between myself and the two girls. Still bent over, I quickly move on and push open the door at my feet. So I can save Sayochan. Kick it in. The it can just referring to is the metal grate serving as an exit. Twisting my body inside the narrow passageway, I kicked downward with all my might as he told me to. With a loud clang, it falls to the ground inside the fish of the ward booth. What? I can immediately see second name Reiko. Oh, her name is Reiko. Shaken by the wire mesh that just fell, she takes a step back from the girl. I jump down following the momentum of my kick. It's far from a clean landing, but at least I don't hurt my leg as I straighten up. As I straighten myself up, Kenji follows behind me. As she becomes aware of the third intruder, Reiko takes several more steps, putting the distance between us. Ignoring her, I rush to the girl's side. Sayo is her name, you know. Are you okay? The girl is lying down with her eyes closed, having lost a great deal of blood. Those blank eyes I saw from the other side of the acrylic windows are now shut. I place my hand on her chest, trying to find our pulse. I can't hear it. The sound of itself seems to be quiet, still within her soft breast. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's the word is funny. <laughs> the resonating vibration is definitely reaching the palm of my hand. As I have a response to my voice, I can hear the girl click her tongue in annoyance. She doesn't seem to have regained consciousness yet, but there's no mistake that she is showing her emotions. You. Even though I know she's still alive now, I can still I still can't lose focus. I can't listen to to the conversation right going, Kenji. Hold as they stand facing each other. Why are you here? Why are you here? Um, do they, do they know each other? The words cut each other off, leaving only sounds between the two of them. Yeah, say, do you know each other? Neither will answer my question. Um, uh, Kenji, Sonic shows Mr. Reiko away. 
With his thick arms and large body, it takes little effort for him to throw her into the wall. Because you're here! Oh. Ah. Um. Kenji? Kenji, you're kind of freaking me out here now. Before she can straighten herself up, he grabs her by the collar and thrusts her into the wall with a great deal of force. Having slammed the back of her head against the wall, Stagnuma Reiko begins to bleed. Leaving traces of blood on the wall, that looked as if someone dipped a cloth in red paint and scrubbed the wall with it. This is quite different from with this is quite different from how it was when Reiko was trying to kill the girl. Her name is Sayo, by the way. Kenji san. Please help me. Treat this girl for now. He's most likely trying to protect us. Who knows when Sagan Mariko, who sought to kill a girl without hesitation, was targeting me. Honestly, I am afraid of her. I have a terrible gut feeling about her. Still, in this moment, Kenji san seems to be acting completely out of rage. That is far more terrifying to me. Yeah, you're right, Mayu chan. Kenji san slowly strains his hunched over body and turns back to me. Ah. Hmm. Applying pressure to her head, Reiko crawls along the floor, moving away from us. She seems to be quite shaken. I suppose that's not unreasonable. There's no way I can sympathize with her, but at the same time, I don't want it to go any further. And her. Sorry. What is that? The lights? Um. Could be the, the, the spirits, the evil spirits who want her. Yeah. I also watch Rayko retreat. I sense that bad feeling once more. I quickly recognize what it is. A red, no, almost black drop of light leaks from Rayko's body. It's not quite act like blood. Drops are leaking from the wound on the back of her head as well, as from the skin of her elbows and knees worn away from crawling on the ground. A drop of ominous lights hovers before being observed by the aquarium. I feel as if I'm looking at something I shouldn't be. And that's something that and that's something that shouldn't be happening is But it's the fact that she appears to be laughing when she leaves the room that bothers me more than anything else. Uh I can't get distracted right now. I have to save this girl. Given this thought voice returns my focus. Even though I said we have to save her, I have no idea what to do at a time like this. At any rate, we have to stop the bleeding. Kenji-san takes the facial tissue from his pocket and wipes away some of the blood. He then gently lifts her head and applies pressure to the wound with the tissue. He is pressing hard on her forehead. As the blood begins to dry, the original color is indistinguishable, as it has become completely red. So do we save her? We saved her! I'm so happy! I'm so happy! <laughs> no, trust me. I, I, I cried a, a little bit when I found out I couldn't save her in my last playthrough. And then, now that I can save her here, I'm so happy. <sighs> now, if only I can save... Oh my god, what's her name? The... Blonde chick? Who was with her in the beginning? Uh, I forgot her name to be honest. I am not good with memory, as you can see. So yeah. Alrighty, let, let's continue. Having roughly wiped away some of the blood, he removes his out outerwear that he has that has blood on it. Before it's a parka parka, he removes in order to hide the blood and at least Lays it on the ground like a pillow. His golden ring looks pretty with his black tank top. There's nothing we can do but wait for now. Wounds are pretty severe, but even with my own limited em emergency treatment, it seems we made it in time, so I'm glad. Will she be okay? She took a really intense blow to the head, so she'll probably be in pain for a while. Her breathing has stabilized, though, so she should be fine. Thank you so much, Kenji-san. Upon hearing his words, so I relief slips from my lips. It's no big deal. More importantly, Mayu chan, you call me by my name now. Huh? Well, that's. 
Uh, please think nothing of it. That's because I thought it best. Uh, I want to save to be safe. Cause I'm afraid if I choose the wrong answer, he might go crazy and kill me again. Be back. Okay, so I'm gonna go that's because I thought it best. That's because I thought it was best. When he went crazy, I called him by his name while he was out of it. I thought that Kenji-san would get through to him more than just Hiyoshi-san would. Yeah, see, I told you. It was a subconscious change, but the desire I to call him by name has not changed. I respect you, Kenji-san. Not only did he save me, he saved the girl too. Rather than the version of him that changed so quickly, this trustworthy side of him leaves a much stronger impression. Since I really talk to adult males, or males at all, I'm not very good at it, but he seems to be strong and kind. Mayu-chan, is that a confession? What? Without recognizing Kenji-san's surprise attack, I turned my face away. So how about it? Come on. Come on. I, I wasn't thinking about anything like that. That's so like you, isn't it, Mayu-chan? Just as I'm thinking, I want to hurry up and get off this topic already. It's Kenji-san who changed the subject. So Mayu-chan, this may not be the best time, but who is this girl? Kenji- Kenji-san acts as he turns his face in the direction of the girl. The girl's eyes are closed, but her soft breathing continues. Her long hair is tied back, and her clothes are more punk than they are high fashion. She likes- she looks like she would prefer a live music club over an aquarium. Her round eyes and soft outlines somehow remind me of Mari's appearance. Actually, I don't know either. I met her after I came to this twisted version of Manton Aquarium. I paused for a moment to remember exactly how I met her, and then continued speaking. Despite the fact that it hasn't been more, been more than half a day since our meeting, this girl and I have struggled for our lives together. She spoke pretty harshly to me when I saw her meal, whose body was under attack from parasites. After that, I saved her, and she saved me. Together, we re researched the secrets of this mountain aquarium, including the fact that the director here was the victim of a murder. So then, you two know about the incident. Ignoring Kenji-san's suggested tone, I continued talking about the girl. She wasn't planning to be with me to the end. She, she steeled herself, saying, If I can't learn the truth, then it's okay if I die, and resolved herself to the end on her own. Just as I thought that we had reached an understanding, I was wrong. Surely she felt she couldn't rely on me. If she hadn't called out to me, I wouldn't have risen up to save my best friend. Then this girl wanted to be by herself from the start. I hesitated for a moment, then nodded. Mayu-chan, before you met up with me, you really experienced so much more than I could have imagined. You've come so very close to the truth, your eyes have taken on such a strong color. So did you know something after all, Kenji-san? I didn't want to scare you all by saying more than necessary. However, it does seem... However, it seems I don't have to sugarcoat things anymore. Please tell me about earlier, your friend, Mayu-chan. What condition is Himilo-chan in right now? Oh. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna leave it off here. I'm gonna continue this so I can get the other ending, and then that's it. Because two endings is good enough for me. I'll see you in the next part. Bye!